Hey everyone, it's the Grumpy Meeple, and I am back with another in my now legendary, in my mind at least, series, um, Marvel United X-Men Who Dis. And uh, this week, we're going to be talking about none other than Longshot. So, let's get right into it. Real name, unrevealed. Yeah, we don't really know. He doesn't, kind of doesn't, Longshot kind of is his name. Hailing from Mojo World, Longshot was an artificial humanoid life form. Designed as a slave of the spineless ones, his creator, Arise, gave him and other slaves free will and consciousness. Some, like him, were given superhuman abilities. After an uprising against the leader Mojo, he escaped to Earth and became Longshot, a nod at his luck for survival. Found by the X-Men, he accompanied them on many adventures. He continues to fight Mojo throughout his life. So, getting into the kind of uh, gameplay. So, just in case it's unclear, Longshot's, and we're going to talk about this, but Longshot's primary ability, as it were, is his luck. Um, and so, you know, it would be like if he fell off of a skyscraper, he would not only be able to kind of gracefully grab onto a flagpole and do a double flip, but he would the momentum from that would send him hurtling into the exact spot that he wanted to land at anyways. That's kind of how his abilities manifest. And so I'm really interested to read how they plan on capturing that in the game. So they say, whether Longshot's accuracy is a result of skill or sheer luck may be up for debate, but it sure is effective. His probability field manipulation ensures events often go in his favor, allowing him to rearrange the next cards in the master plan deck however he sees fit. And if he ever loses hope, causing his luck to fail him, he can rely on his regenerative abilities to keep him going. Yeah, this is this is pretty cool actually. Um, so I would assume that he's gonna have a lot of attack because just because of the miniature and the way they have him kind of captured here with his trademark kind of flechette daggers that he throws. Um, and it sounds like he's also going to have some regenerative capabilities as he does in the comics and the ability to mess around with the master plan deck, which will kind of be the game's manifestation of his probability field manipulation or his luck as it's commonly referred to and so here's the miniature it's a really cool miniature as far as i'm concerned um kind of no no complaints here and i like if you look closely you can see that he even has so one of the aspects of his character is that whenever he uses his whenever his mutant abilities are in use or his abilities i shouldn't say mutant because we'll talk about that in a minute uh, his his left eye lights up and you can see in the miniature here that it is it's doing the same so when he's jumping over this little wall he is using his ability to um, alter probability so let's dig a little deeper I've got my handy dandy MS paint created kind of one sheet here although look guys I'm getting fancy now this actually I'm not actually using MS Paint right now I saved this as a JPEG so super fancy um, so Longshot first appears in his own comic basically Longshot number one it was a six issue miniseries that kind of introduced the character um, and his kind of backstory in terms of the fight against Mojo, which is his kind of driving force. And um, he basically comes to Earth and, and back, you know, and, and eventually 
returns to Mojoverse to to fight to fight that fight again. He's basically trying to free the people of the Mojoverse from Mojo. That's his kind of character's driving force. And so here you can see we've got an image of his of his first appearance in in X-Men which was in X-Men Annual Volume 10. Um, and basically what happens is the X-Men are in the danger room and they're watching, some of them are in kind of the, you know, viewing station watching the others train. Um, and Mojo is also watching and streaming it to his kind of, <laughs> customer base or I don't even know what you would call him so the whole deal with Mojo is that he he rules he's the ruler of a world called the Mojoverse where basically television has become the state religion and the really like the only reason to exist <laughs> and Mojo is the kind of head programmer slash entertainer slash um kind of he's just the puppet master who is constantly looking for new content to create to feed to the masses to keep them um enthralled and excited and so he's watching he he's streaming of a video of the X-Men training in the danger room and he kind of decides it's too boring and so he just drops long shot in there to see what happens basically <laughs> it's like a really weird kind of concept for a character and an enemy it's it's really pretty cool though and you know you can see down here we have captured the the conflict between the two um where it's just always it always ends up that long shot is kind of going up against mojo and trying to free the people of the mojo verse and <laughs> you can see here let me see if i can um get a little bit better zoom on this if i do this yeah you can see here right up until the end mojo is the consummate kind of uh entertainer he says, he, Longshot is jumping at him with a freaking sword in his hand. And Mojo just says, yes, Longshot, work with me. Go with your feelings. Give them a finale they can remember. Give them me. <laughs> he gets cut in half. Um, just such a weird character. I love it. Um, so that that's kind of Longshot's motivation and his connection to mojo and, and the way he gets introduced to the x-men um the next thing that i wanted to talk about was his kind of familial relationships because this gets really weird um and awesome so long shot is not a mutant that's the first thing to note he's not technically a mutant he's a bioengineered creation of this guy in from the mojo verse named arise who and i might not be pronouncing that correctly um but who cares um who who creates these slaves for mojo to fill his programming with and arise basically decides that th these these slaves shouldn't just be they should have the ability to fight back basically and and to have free will and to try to break free of their captivity and so he kind of programs that into their dna and a select few of these of these slaves he he grants superhuman abilities to and Longshot is one of them and so he's not a mutant but he his path intersects often with the x-men and, and that's you know usually where you would see him is in one of the various x books um 
he has a a close connection slash relationship with the the X Men, the member of the Uncanny X Men, um, Dazzler, uh, who the light generating kind of uh, songstress who we'll be talking about in the next episode, and to the point where they're lovers basically, and they actually end up having uh, Dazzler gets pregnant. And you can see here, Xavier kind of is the one to break the news to him because he can sense the child, you know, in in Dazzler's belly. Uh, he says, just in time, it would seem, for what greater gift could two parents give to the unborn child I sense within Allison? And then they're like, wow, love. <laughs> so the child that they're talking about ends up being another ex character named Shatterstar who gets sent a hundred years into the future this gets really complicated so bear with me and I'm not going to apologize for the fact that some of this I'm not going to get 100% right um, but Shatterstar gets sent a hundred years into the future of the Mojo verse and then sent back in time and ends up being to to predate Longshot and ends up being Longshot's genetic father, meaning that Longshot is both Shatterstar's father and Shatterstar's son. <laughs> Just like the most insane storyline you've ever heard of. And they and here's a panel from one of the last issues of of one of the X-Factor runs where they <laughs> tried to explain this. Um, and so you can see here <laughs> saying, are, are you telling me that Longshot was cloned from Shatterstar? And this is a rise. He says, not cloned exactly, otherwise they'd be identical. But I extracted the mechanics of what makes your friend tick, performed modifications and improvements. To put it another way, Shatterstar is Longshot's father. <laughs> but as I stated up here, Longshot is also Shatterstar's father because of all this time travel manipulation. So this is, <laughs> this is hilarious. And it might be the only father-son kind of familial relationship in the X-Books that's actually more complicated than the <laughs> Cyclops, Jean Grey slash Madeline prior slash cable <laughs> connection which we'll probably get into in a in a future episode i assume but um yeah th this is a real mind mind bender <laughs> and so lots of weirdness going on with his kind of connection to other x-men and x-force characters in terms of their their kind of familiar relationships and then the other main thing that I wanted to talk about was his power set. So I mentioned it before that Longshot's primary ability is his kind of what, you know, shorthand you would call his mutant luck factor, even though he's not a mutant. Um, he's running around with the X-Men and he's often mistaken for a mutant. And and uh, there's even like a, a comic that he even calls it out sometimes. Like people just think I'm a mutant because I'm always with these guys. And I don't know. I don't know why they assume that. Um, so his, his luck manifests in, so it's interesting because his luck is based heavily on his intention, intentions. So the way that that manifests is if Longshot uses his abilities and he has a kind of clear heart and he's using them for good, then they will manifest to his benefit. If he tries to use them selfishly, then they will manifest as bad luck. But because the character is so pure-hearted and innocent and kind of such a good guy, he basically always uses them to do the right thing. So you can see here he's in a fight and he calls out to the beast as he's fighting this person. 
Hey Beast, as the only X-Men whose thoughts are still your own, what are the odds I'd be able to toss her loose in midair? <laughs> so he's kind of self-referential about the fact that his powers are are luck based and and he likes to he's kind of joking about the probability of him even being able to do this feat that he's pulling off here. Um, and then over here you have a scene where basically a building has fallen on him. And you've got Psylocke and Dazzler finding him saying, hey, he's not even scratched. And Dazzler just says, Longshot, you are too lucky for words. So this is, this is how his powers manifest. So he, he's trapped in the wreckage of a building and he doesn't have a scratch on him. <laughs> he's also got like superhuman kind of general agility and durability. And he's got that regenerative healing factor that we talked about. He's got hollow bones, which I have never understood why that's such a benefit. I suppose it, it adds to his agility because it makes him lightweight and, and um, you know, flexible. But here you've got an, a, a scene showing that where Havoc is getting ready to blast Dazzler and Longshot jumps in. And remember, Havoc's abilities are if you don't know Havoc's mutant ability is to basically the ability to fire plasma energy from his chest and so he's blasted Dazzler and Longshot is so quick moving with inhuman speed and grace that he's able to, 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 to jump out and grab her basically and they both get out unscathed and so this is a this is a manifestation of his agility obviously where he's flipping and grabbing her um and his luck again the other kind of weird aspect of his powers is that he has what they call superhuman attractiveness which is hilarious if you check out his dope mullet that he's sporting in all these <laughs> you know, in most of these scenes, um, I guess Marvel associated mullets with superhuman attractiveness back in the day, which is cool, man, mullets, you know, it's all good. But, um, and, and, and so you can see that, man. So, so basically women are irresistibly drawn to him and, and fall in love with him at first sight. Um, there are scenes where like the entire kind of female side of the, when they meet X, when they meet Longshot for the first time, the entire female side of the X Men like all fall in love with him basically, and so Rogue and Dazzler and and uh, whoever else is in the room, they're all <laughs> they're all enamored with him. Um, but you can see that manifest in this scene where Longshot is out at a bar with the the rest of the boys, if you as you would, um, like Wolverine and Colossus, etc. And <laughs> he just. You can see there's like a line of of women that are instantly fall for him and and uh, somebody says how does he do that long shots got ladies lined up out the door to dance with him and wolverine said kids got a lot of heart two of them in fact so i'm told um but really it's it's this superhuman attractiveness element of his power set and then it's not really a power, but just to note a few more kind of oddities about the character, you can see here, he only has three fingers. So he has three fingers and an opposable thumb. Um, and he's commonly seen using those fingers to throw his custom kind of calling card fleshette daggers, like really thin um, strips of steel that, or whatever that he throws, he uses as a throwing weapon. And so you can see he's always wearing these bandoliers because he's got them strapped all over his body, basically, all the daggers that he uses. Um, and he's constantly like pulling them out of his pockets and, and throwing them at, at enemies. And obviously, you know, manifest, his mutant luck power will manifest in the use of these where he'll throw them in the exact perfect spot to you know, trigger an explosion that blows up the bad guy and doesn't hurt 
the good guy that's standing two feet away from him, you know, stuff like that. So, pretty cool character, kind of a real oddball. Um, most of the characters from the Mojoverse are, um, but I don't, uh, I don't mind that. I certainly don't dislike it. It's an interesting, cool kind of off the wall character. So, if you want to see more about Longshot. Uh, his first appearance is in the X-Men was in X-Men Annual Volume 1, number 10. That's this issue where he teleports into the danger room. And then he basically has a long run in Uncanny X-Men Volume 1 and kind of pops in and out of various X-Books. He shows up in X-Men Volume 2. Uh, there's a like a two story, a two book arc in the early, like issues nine and 10, I think, or maybe 10 and 11 of that book where long shots, you know, featured. Um, he's a returning character in a book called The Exiles, which is a really cool book all about like kind of uh, jumping between alternate realities and alternate, and, and the, the team, the exiles, as it were, are all kind of from alternate realities, and and so Longshot is a member of of that team, starting in issue number seventy four, and then he's also a recurring character in the later runs of X Factor. Um, this gets really weird because at some point, and I don't fully understand this. It was volume three of X Factor, and so he shows up in issue 35. But at some point, and I think it was with issue 50 maybe, they revert back to numbering as though the volumes didn't exist. So it jumps from like volume 57, or issue 57 or 50 to issue 200 and whatever. Um, but if you just read X Factor starting from volume three with issue number 35, regardless of the numbering, it'll, you'll, you'll be reading the issues that Longshot plays a part in. And so that's it. That's all I had about Longshot. Let me know if you have any thoughts or questions or feedback in the comments below. And, um... Fear not, these will continue to come. Believe it or not, it's a surprising amount of work to kind of capture all this stuff. I'm grabbing most of these screenshots myself out of, um, well, I don't want to say from where, just in case some corporate stooge is watching, but I'm getting these from the books, basically. And and um, so I hope you're enjoying it because it's it's not an inconsiderable um, amount of time to to kind of collect my thoughts and and find all the particular instances that I want to use in which a person's powers or their relationships are kind of called out. So let me know if you are enjoying it and look out next for next week's installment, which I believe is going to be Dazzler, so a character closely related to Longshot.